There are a few keywords to look for to know that you have non-uniform circular motion. One is any situation where you've been told that there is an angular acceleration. And remember that angular acceleration is alpha, which represents a change in angular speed over a time interval. So if you have an angular acceleration that is not equal to zero, then you have non-uniform circular motion, remembering that uniform circular motion had a constant angular speed. So you're not normally going to be told explicitly that. You might instead be told that your object is speeding up or slowing down as it is traveling in a circle. And again, remember that we said that our centripetal acceleration or our angular, sorry, our acceleration in the radial direction was equal to v squared over r. So clearly, if we have a changing v, we have to worry about an increase in this. And that also means that we're going to have an increase in our tangential speed. So finally, uh, you might simply be told that you have a force in the direction of motion or exactly opposite of the direction of motion, and this would be tangential to the circle. So what this means in all cases is that you have a changing speed, tangential speed, and that your net force is no longer exactly towards the center. So the case of uniform circular motion was when you had your force exactly towards the center, and now you see that your net force vector is not exactly towards the center. You can imagine breaking this net force into a component that is radial and a component that is tangential. You see that this component is parallel to the instantaneous velocity vector. It is also tangential to the circle. So when we talk about non-uniform motion, we still have our acceleration towards the center, right? However, we also now have a tangential component, and that is what we're interested in discussing. This is just like when we talked about two-dimensional acceleration and that we had the component that is parallel to the velocity, which is in fact causing a change in speed. So at this point here shown, our instantaneous velocity vector is tangential to the circle. So that means that this tangential component of net force is parallel to the velocity vector, so that is causing a change in speed. We have a component that's towards the center, that is what we talked about for uniform circular motion, and this is causing the change in direction. So this part gives you a circle, this part gives you the change in speed. To do the calculation, we go back to the three components of our net force that we've discussed before. When we talked about uniform circular motion, this top term was the same. Again, this is our net force towards the center of the circle, our r direction, and we know that that's going to be equal from Newton's second law to mass times acceleration in the r direction. So that can be our v squared over r, where we add the t to remember that this is the tangential component of the velocity, That's or the only usually velocity, or we could express that in terms of angular speed. So same thing, just expressed in linear speed or angular speed. On the other hand, we now have a non-zero term here. So if your acceleration in the tangential direction is zero, then you have uniform circular motion. If you have a non-zero term here, then you have non-uniform circular motion. And again, this is causing your object to speed up or slow down. I now want to show you one example, and we won't do the whole thing, just show the setup for it. So in this case, we have a car that is traveling in a circle. Now, we've then broken up and created our free body diagram. And one of the things that I want to show about this free body diagram is we are now dealing with forces in three dimensions. So in the z direction, you have gravity and normal force. So this would be up out of the page here, and gravity would be into the page how this looks. So the RTZ coordinate system, normal force is coming out of the page. That's our positive Z direction. So we have a frictional force towards the center of the circle. Static friction, as before, is what's actually causing our car to go in a circle. But we now also have a force from the wheels in the tangential direction. That is what tells you that this is, in fact, non-uniform motion. Because we have that force that is actually in the tangential direction, this means your car is constantly speeding up. And that would actually mean that our frictional force, this is static, so this has a max value, so that's something to remember. But we have um, 
this force in the tangential direction. So it's a little weird to see your coordinate system presented like this, but remember that there's actually a 90 degree angle between each of these. It's just attempting to show that three-dimensional system projected onto two dimensions. This is rather difficult to draw, so you could show two free body diagrams that actually represent different projections of this. We also won't deal with this situation too much, but you should be ready to understand that if you see a tangential component of force, that means you have uh, non-uniform motion.